Hello everyone, we're back uh, with my Hull tutorials, and today we are going to be doing what in theory should be the final part. Um, a quick disclaimer, if you guys uh, want me to go over something else about hulls that you think I missed, uh, I'm more than glad to do that. But today we're going to be going over the final section about hulls and slope staggering, which is how to do the bottom portion beneath the waterline, or obviously this section here in red. And of course, the main thing I'm going to be focusing on is the stern section, because I think this is what troubles the most people. Uh, so if you guys want me to come back and go over how to uh, do bows, bulbous bows, I can do that. But let's focus on this. So first things first, um, I want you to do, there's going to be like two main outlines, technically three. So you have your waterline outline up here. I know, so many lines. Um, you're going to want uh, a cross-section outline, so this little red connection thing here. Um, and a quick advice on that, um, against common misconception, this is a single concavity line. Um, if I'll, I'll, I'll come back to it later, but I think a lot of people think that they go like, um, it's hard to do this with edgy controls, they go like this, and then they drop down like this and that, then go over like that. Um, technically you're not wrong, but that's um, the keel rudder portion thing. Well, it's not the rudder on all ships, but I'll go over into adding that later. That's not actually part of the initial curve. Let's, we're going to focus on getting the initial uh, hydrodynamic curve of the stern first. Anyways, so you're going to want this. So notice how it starts off as slope stagger of 1, 4, 8, 8, and then I keep going through 8s um, until we reach here, which is goes up to 11. So it's it's gradually increasing in uh, stagger length from here all the way to here. And that's actually the logic. We're going to be working off in rows off of this one. So we're going to build, we have our main row here. We're going to have another one here, 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 and so on. And you can start to actually see that on another model here where I have it slightly more work done is that I've started going from here back um, in rows. And that's how that's the main way you're going to look at it. Um, so as I was saying, you're going to want those to be constantly, um, basically they'll have, they'll be sharpest here, uh, or the shortest stagger up at the back, and the longest stagger as it comes up to meet the flat bottom of the hull. Um, Anyways, and there's one last kind of outline. It's not incredibly important, and it just has to be a rough parabola. Um, also, if you don't know what a parabola is at this point, um, why are you building holes in from the depths? You need to know some basic geometry. I don't know if you got that from any of the previous hull tutorials I made, but I digress. So you want a, a basic parabola here. It's, it's going to be sharper, not sharper, um blunter actually than the one you have here. So you notice how this comes to a point. This is a really soft curve. It's it's almost just a half circle. Uh, it's nothing too severe. But So what you're going to do is you're just going to start off by building off of this main one and um, basically just make it meet ends. And I'm going to start building this a little bit so you can kind of see what you're supposed to do and then I'm going to switch to the next one. Anyways, so you're kind of going to build your rows out like this, and it's going to start out sharper, and then it's going to kind of meet where this one is. Um, that doesn't make any sense. I'll explain in a second. So, I have one, I have four, but instead of doing the eight that this one does, so we have one, four, and then we have eight meters of stagger. I'm doing seven meters of stagger here. And then I'm going to do the 8 meters stagger, and so on and so on. So you're going to, if you're not following it, I'm going to do it one more time to kind of show. Um, if you're, This is kind of a pattern you're going to follow, is that with each and every row you go outwards, um, the initial stagger is um, a little more intense. So we're going to go 1, 4, and 4 again, and I think we're going to do 6 here. Um, yeah, and then I think we'll, we'll go to 8. 
Um, we'll keep it at eight. Um, so this one's eight. I'm building out this row as we go. Um, I'm setting a bad example. I have, I'm not even finishing my rows. Um, the goal is you, you want to finish, don't do what I'm doing, finish, finish your rows first, um, and then, then start the next row. Um, so, and that one's 11 again. 4, 3, 4, 11. Um, so that one's 11. And then we're going to go here. Um, we're going to take some off of the 11 at the end here. So, um, as, as we move back along the hall, the stagger compresses. Um, so as you can see here, we don't we don't want to be using like four meter staggers all the way back. Uh, this is this isn't even correct. So don't even don't take notes on the actual block placement here. I'm just kind of showing you why we aren't doing this. You're gonna see how extreme that is. Um, you could argue hulls go that way, but it's just as just notice it's a lot shallower. Or I don't know if shallower is the right word, but it's a lot. There's a lot less staggering going on back here. Notice how I'm using all fours. Imagine if I was using eights all the way back. We would, in some ways, reach the front. But um, I digress. So the, the moral is, as as we move out in the rows, our still stagger gets shallower and shallower. And you probably put that together because we have such a, um, a very round parabola here and a very pointy parabola back here. And we're making those two lines meet. So you can kind of get the idea of the cross-section of these rows as we get for, move further and further out. Um, yeah. So there's two places that you can really take off the shorten the stagger. And that's and the initially, as you saw here, how we're going one, we had one, four, eight here, and then we kind of went to one, four, seven, and then one, four, six um, with the staggering here. And then as you saw back here, we went from 11 and 11 to being at um, 10 meters of stagger. Um, boom, 10 meters of stagger. Anyways, um, so now I'm going to switch to, um, that was all talk about how your rows should look. Now I'm going to talk about how... Um, they should work together horizontally, and I'm also going to talk about when you should switch to um, angled slopes, or uh, these things. Um, because one of the things about slope staggering is you're making things like this meet things like this, or as you can see right here, uh, the direction of the slope changes. So that's where... Um, the angles come in handy. So uh, we'll, we'll touch on that quickly, and I will come back to this later because I will be bringing in megaliths so you can kind of see this, how this works on a large scale. Um, actually, that's why I label these in yellow, but we're going to start here with four. So you're probably wondering why I'm switching out these angles, um, these one meter slopes with the angled slopes. And as you'll see, it it's a really blunt thing. It's a 90 degree calamity in here. It's just pretty rough, and it stands out. Um, now you probably won't get deduction points on that, but if you want to get your hulls to look a bit better, switch to these things, uh, the angled slope, the inverted slopes, um, because it just, it smoothens it out just a little bit. It's not much, but it, it does a little bit, and a, a little goes a long way. Um, so I'm going to switch over to these yellow ones, which I labeled here, because... This this goes into another concept, which I guess I should cover beforehand, which is the uh, horizontal relation between these slope staggers. So I'm going to label these in blue. You want to um, make sure the slope stagger is correct on the horizontal plane. So let's label a few out here and make sure they're in the correct positioning. I didn't have mirror mode on. And you will discover an error soon, which I didn't fix. Uh, spoiler alert, this is my second time recording this video. <laughs> Last time I recorded 20 minutes without audio. Um, so that was pretty unfortunate. But anyways, uh, you might notice here, um, there was a case without symmetry. Um, and so I'm going to make... Uh, 
let's let's demonstrate. So one of one of these is a three meter, and the other one's a four meter. Uh, and I guess in some ways you should choose which one's more appropriate. If you're still new to this uh, concept of doing hulls under the waterline, you're probably really scratching your head right now and wondering why I'm asking you such a question. Uh, so I'll walk you through some of the math here about horizontal relation and talking about slope staggers. So we have the relationship among these. So let's count them off. This is these two are a slope staggered at two meters, or there's two meters of distance between them. Two meters again between the top at corners. Uh, two meters. And then we go down to three meters, um, four meters, and so on and so on until we reach the back of the hull. And that looks kind of parallels that slope staggering we're doing on our waterline, as it should. It it should be a single parabola. Um, when you're dealing with below the waterline, there should be no switches in concavity. If you don't know what concavity is, take a geometry class. All right. Um, so that was the top, and we're all good. What about the other side here? Why did you blow up? Okay, those things are apparently flawed. Um, that's not good. Uh, so let's hurry up here. Uh, one of my ship holders just blew up. Um, <laughs> I digress. So what about over here? Uh, we have two meters, we have two meters, two meters, three meters, three meters, four meters, and so on and so on. So that looks pretty good. So what's the difference between um, this three meter over here and the four meter? Well, before I was counting off the top of the slopes, so um, uh, I'm going to try to make use, use these as an improv arrow. Um, so we were counting off um, the distance at the top of the slope. So it's two meters up here, but it's also, if we look down here, um, two meters as well. Okay, that makes sense. So two meters again at the top, two meters at the bottom. But now we have our three meter slope, two meters at the top, but only one meter at the bottom. And then we have three meters at the bottom. So um, what about over here? Um, it's actually the same thing because there's two me three meters in here. Um, ish. I'll explain in a second. So two meters on top, two meters on top. We know, we know the top's good. The bottom though, we have two meters, we have one meter, we have two meters, and then we have three meters. Well, that's a couple changes in concavity. Um, so let's try to fix this. What if we swap this with the four meter like it was on the other side? But as I kind of pointed out, there's still an error over there. So now we have two meters, two meters, that's great. But now we have a one meter and then a three meter. So what do we do here? Simple, we change this three meter to a four meter and we bam. So let's count it off now. We have two meters on the bottom, two meters on the bottom still, two meters on the bottom, two meters again on the bottom. Now three meters, three meters on the bottom. Oh wait, sorry, four meters on the bottom over here, and we're good. And it's still pretty good on the top. So great, we fixed that. That's the horizontal uh, relativity, um, and you should do that for all rows to make sure that they kind of are following this parabolic curve, make sure that you don't have switches, you don't want them going out, you don't want, so we have two meters here, we have zero, we have two for none, we have a one meter, one meter, and they don't want to go back to two here, or you don't, at the same time, you don't want to go back to two, and then to one, if that makes any sense. Because notice here, if we were to drape a string of spaghetti, wet spaghetti, I don't know, it's the first thing that came to my mind, over the top of this, notice how we drop back and then our concavity would change right here. I know it's hard to see with the yellow, but um, right here. So that's pretty important to fix. All right, so now that I got that out of the way, um, and I'm gonna destroy this because I confused myself. I, I played myself, ha ha. Okay, I gotta stop laughing at my own jokes. All right, so what about these? You said you'd explain them better. That's right. So we have a three meter here, but there's this awkward gap and notice how it's not touching the three meter in front of it. Um, that means we can swap it out with a three meter angle block. So one of those, one of those, ba-boom. Actually, we can do that, wait, I'm confusing myself. 
I realized why I couldn't do that before. <laughs> um, was actually because of these up here. But I'm going to keep demonstrating. <laughs> the show must go on. Um, yeah, you can see why I played myself. Um, that's one thing you want to avoid is... Uh, I should not see the top side of any of these. This whole bright yellow... Well, it's all bright yellow here, but... This shining in the sun kind of thing. No, we, we don't want to see that. It shouldn't take a mathematician to figure that out. But, um... Let's, let's, let's put a temporary fix in. Um, this really isn't a temporary fix. This is me just showing you. You can do this either way. It doesn't matter. Um... Okay, well, um... None of that made any sense. I really confused you guys, and I'm sorry there. But the important thing is, um, there are scenarios where you can switch to, um, you can switch one of these slopes, slopes, and you can fit in a longer edge. Now, technically, you can do this for um, two meters and one meters. Uh, as I, as you see here, it really depends on the situation. Um, because if I was, here's my rule of thumb. I generally like the longest angle. So hence why we used four meters for slope staggering instead of say one meters, because just the angle switches are less awkward. That's why it, the optimal scenario is that you use the four meter angled slopes and kind of use let me show you what a 3 meter slope stagger looks like. Um, so you could switch. Notice how horizontally we're moving back. Technically 7 meters. I'm calling it 3 meters because of the distance between the tips. Okay, yeah, so it is 3 meters. Sorry. Um, so I could switch that out with... Technically, I think... A... Um, no, sorry, I'm still confusing myself. Um, gosh, I'm really sorry, guys. Um, but in scenarios like this, if I was using the 3 meters on a vertical slope, and there was room over here to switch it, technically I could. Um, it's... No, I'm selecting the wrong slope again. Um, anyways. What I'm trying to say is, if you remember back to my first um, video on this, there comes a point where if you're st staggering more than four meters, you might as well switch to these things. Um, vertically, that is. Um, horizontally, it doesn't make a difference because that's just a flat plane. But vertically, there's kind of like this angle shift. You're trying to make two planes meet, and you might as well switch to this because the whole reason why you use slope stagger I'm just going to come up here, is because instead of having, I don't know, <laughs> d doing this all day, is that you use actual slopes to give it a smoother edge. And you can, you can tell, especially when it adds up at a long distance, you can tell that this one here looks really smooth from an angle, and this one's kind of just like, you stack them all together and they look rigid. Um, so that's what I'm saying, is that, for the most part, you want to use these, but once you get to a certain point, especially when you're, like, reaching angles such as this, you're going to want to switch to um, this. So as I was saying, um, this is a lesson I kind of covered in uh, the first one. So the, these are the equivalent of 4 meter slope staggers. Um, I know I'm doing a really shitty job of explaining that, and I'm very sorry right now um, of how to use that on the bottom uh, of when your stagger reaches more than 4 meters. So I'm going to switch ships here and uh, load in Megalith. Um, and Megalith has the props and it has the keel extension on it, so you can just kind of see that in use. Um, and it also has the the four meter angles, and the main purpose of the four meter angles is to kind of compensate for the um, for forty five degree slopes and kind of make them more round. And if you use them just right, it's it's not just a hard cut to a forty five degree angle. 
I'll point it out in a second, but it can really, uh, if you stagger the, the angled slopes themselves just right, then they will really give a round surface. Now, I'm making all this fuss about angled surfaces and why they're important and all that, but you really don't have to think about them. Just go over it the first time, like this, all the way through. So this method I was teaching you earlier about doing the rows and paying attention to them um, with their horizontal uh, relativity, and then you come back over and kind of see where you can redo them with um, this vertical slope stacking. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little breakdown here to show you what it looked like beforehand, and I guess I'm doing it in yellow. Uh, surprise, surprise! Don't you just love it how I don't plan these videos? I just do them on the spot. Anyway, so you can kind of see where I switched. So these were like two meters uh, slope staggers before. Um, but now we are at a three meter slope stagger, and hence why I switched to the three meter slopes. And you can really see the effect they did in the long run. So instead of instead of using these slopes here, I just let's grab them. And notice how, yeah, so that's, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave it at there. Um, that's all you really have to worry about. And notice how they, even up here, it keeps extending. But, like I said, just go through it with the slopes first. Um, and then you convert them back. Um, that's how I did it, and it worked out just fine. Um, yeah. And so the last part, um, as I was mentioning earlier, how you have that keel, I add, I always add mine in post. Um, you might want to, if you're really nitpicky about having it integrate well, um, then perhaps take it into account when you're originally building it. That would break the rule of always follow, everything following one concavity. Um, if you're confused about what that, don't worry about it. Just I'm sorry. Um, this is, I'm, you have to forgive me, I'm saying sorry a lot, but this is like the hardest thing to explain because it's, it takes into account all three slope staggerings of sorts. And I know I only taught you two, but um, we're talking about, technically it is two. It's the initial two I taught you where you have the horizontal st slope staggering. Uh, which you see here in the rows, it's just vertically, and then you have the vertical slope staggering, um, which is horizontally. Um, yeah, um, so that's, I, I'm just going to say that's an important way to break it down, is that the, the row, um, the cup, the horizontal, <laughs> you, you swap the vertical slope staggering and the horizontal slope staggering. Basically, it's just like slope staggering any other part of the ship. It's just you rotate the slopes to be, um, sorry, 90 degrees as opposed to what they were. Anyways, I'm massacring my boy just to teach you guys slope staggering. Just how could you guys bring me to this? Um, I'm trying to think if there's any last things I need to run over with you guys. Um, as I was saying, I almost always add my keels in post. You see this giant paddle here? That's This is the rudder, but this is the keel. Um, don't worry about it. It's the same thing, basically. Um, this just giant red thing protruding out of the hull like a wall. That's basically the keel. Um, many, many, many ships have them, but I have yet to really see many exceptions where when you're looking at hulls, look, look at pictures, don't look at ship buckets or deviant art photos, because those really only give you profile views, unless they have, like, uh, the ship line. But if you look at, like, real photos of hulls, especially in dry docks, that'll give you a hull of just how these shapes work. 
Um, and I was saying earlier, and I said also ignore this if it confuses you, but um, <sighs> I'm not great at explaining these, but everything here follows one concavity. You don't have a switch in concavity, so I'm going to bring in one last model um, to really show you what that means, is that there's, there's no kinks, there's no changes in um, the slope staggering directions. Um, there's no there's no changes in the curves. It's just one. It's almost like a sphere, except it's definitely not a sphere. Um, we're gonna bring in the, the Yamato um, to demonstrate. And um, you can really just see what I mean is that just about every angle you look at it, it's even if it's very subtle, it has that curve to it. And it's using largely the same techniques. I built this a while ago. Um, so you really... Um, I did some things differently. There's a few ways to do it. Because, like I said, there's multiple ways to slope stagger. There's, you could build it with these angles first, and then you can switch the rows and vice versa. And, oh my gosh, that's an error. That's... <laughs> Uh, I know it wasn't a great hole to show you guys, but I had to show you anyways. Um, it's not like I'm finishing this ship anyways. <laughs> but you really can see it. This is, this is, um, although it's poorly done, I will admit, it, it does show you kind of what, um, a complete hull looks like without the propellers, without the keel on it. Um... And um, mainly I want you focusing on this bottom slope section, kind of how it curves, not so much the um, these things over here, because they're really poorly done. But even so, even poorly done, you can really see it still looks pretty great, <laughs> uh, I must admit. Um, so that, that was, um, gosh, that was bad. <laughs> that was worse than the first time. <laughs> But, um, I hope that helped. Um, I, I apologize that this wasn't really that great, even though I tried organizing even more than last time. Um, it's, it's really a mentality thing. Um, especially because, like I mentioned, you're, you're dealing with a change in directions of how the slopes flow. Um, and if you're still confused about that, like I said, it's... You're getting things going from like this to being like this, um, and that's that's really where um, these angle slopes come into play. Is really for that that 45 degree slope when you when you reach the 45 degree angle range, you can really see what I'm talking about how it bends over, um, and especially in this section. And yeah. It's 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 hard, but once you really get it down, once you figure out exactly what you're doing, it really pays off. Um, so I'm sorry for taking up 30 minutes of your time, and I really hope that uh, you at least got something out of this. These hull tutorials are always really long. Um, so like I said in the beginning, if you have any other additional questions about slope staggering, just ping me on Discord or leave a comment down below. Um, also. Um, by the way, so if you're ready, that's everything about um, slope staggering. Uh, but the rest of this is just going to be a few quick announcements. Um, so thank you if you're sticking around this long. Um, I just want to say that um, thanks to the guys at the United Builders, we're finally launching our YouTube channel. Um, there's a lot of people going in behind that, and we're going to have a number of people recording, hopefully, and a few people editing. Um, so I won't, I won't give a list of thank yous just yet. Uh, well, because we're still getting started, but we still have a lot of projects um, on our hands as a channel. Um, but I just want to say, um, if you found this remotely helpful, or if you hate me and would rather watch someone else's YouTube videos, <laughs> um, just just know that uh, we have more content on the way. Uh, more FTD content and more from other games, such as uh, War Thunder, uh, Jackbox, and... I think we're also thinking of doing cross out. Um, looking forward to trying to do some D&D &D over the summer. 
Uh, no idea if that'll come on our YouTube channel or not, but that's that's for our Discord. Um, but really, it's most of this content is going to be kind of like showing you guys what we do as a community, because at the United Builders we have a lot of fun, and um, and hopefully share with you guys um, whether you're a United, a United Builder or not. I botched pronouncing that, but that's okay. I suck at English, and I'm proud of it. Um, anyways, that's all. Um, thanks for watching.